come with me for a few days around Amsterdam as I mix up film and digital photography and try not to get in the ass by a bicycle. Last time I was in the Netherlands, I went on my first bike ride for about 20 years. And without getting into too much detail, let's just say a saddle technical mishap meant I had quite an eye-watering experience. So I'll be trying to rebuild my trust in Dutch bicycles as I adventure around the country over the next few days. And while it's not a photography trip, I have brought a few cameras with me. of these holes don't want to stumble into one of those this house down the end here is quite interesting but it's very well lit compared to the rest of the woods and there's a train tracks down there so we've got some options but i must not i must not let this bike get stolen because it's my mother-in-law's <laughs> There's no real plan as such for taking photos. It's just a matter of fitting in what we can around visiting family. So we shall see what it brings, but let's go and do it. So I've got my Yashica FXD, which is my favorite 35 mm film camera. And I've also brought my latest purchase, this, the Fujifilm X100T. And these are both kept in this Peak Design Everyday Sling 3 liter, which fits these two perfectly. One thing that's missing from my gear though is a video capable camera. We're traveling really light on this trip. I've just brought one carry-on bag. So there's no proper video camera, proper video camera. That sounded like a good challenge, right? To make a decent video without a decent video camera. Normally I'd be carrying my Canon EOS R, which is brilliant for video stuff. But on this trip, it's not here with me. I've got these two cameras with me. So my plan is to see if I can record a video using my iPhone, which is this is now shooting on, which is an iPhone uh, 11 Pro and the Fujifilm X100T, which is renowned for being terrible for video. I'm not optimistic, just based on what everyone else has said about it and just a very brief look at some of the menus on it. But who knows, I wanna, I'd love to be able to prove the popular opinion wrong, <laughs> but I don't think I will. But let's go, let's try. I also have a GoPro Hero 6 Black with me which I used to shoot some of the bike stuff earlier. I'll talk more about shooting video later, and from now on, I'll put up on screen what I'm filming on. But now, here's some photos from one of my favorite places to be, by the ocean. The next day, we jumped on a train for something completely different. This whole video section was shot on the 
Fuji and I'm gonna leave it ungraded as I love how it has a vintage film vibe straight out of camera and you can see how that looks. We've come to Amsterdam, but before we start shooting, I just want to talk about this, the Fuji X100T. I was never interested in Fuji cameras until I started shooting on film. Then suddenly it just made complete sense to buy a digital camera by the Japanese giant. After all, they've made film for years. Their cameras have beautiful analog film camera vibes with actual physical dials and switches. And they have film emulations that replicate the look of classic Fuji film stocks. Kyle McDougall first grabbed my attention when he was shooting Fuji next to actual film and getting incredibly similar stunning results. Then it just seemed more and more photographer friends I spoke to were getting their hands on one. I've only had it about a week, so this is me very much trying to get to grips with it and work it out as I go. stumbled across this cool little vintage game shop which had all sorts of retro stuff that took me right back to my youth. Although our hunt for a camera shop was a complete failure because it turned out we were visiting on a special bank holiday so they were all shut. In fact, we couldn't find anywhere that sold color 35 mil film at all during our trip. It had been a bit of a grey and miserable day, but then things got even worse. This is not going so well. So we dived into a bar And it was a chance to let the Fuji dry out and the iPhone to shoot some video in low light. One of the biggest issues with the Fuji is its lack of stabilization in video mode, which is one of the iPhone's strengths. The iPhone footage usually looks rather good and works well with its auto settings. So you can just hit record and be confident of the results. Compared to the Fuji though, it's over sharpened and lacks depth of field and any kind of character. Then we had to head back to the train, but slapped a few more images on our way. The next day, in search of drier weather, we drove north to catch a ferry to the West Frisian Islands. But of course, when we got there, it was raining. Right, we've been trying to do some photography across Holland, but it's been pissing down with rain every single day, and it's been really frustrating, so we haven't been able to do much but we've come to the island of Texel and we found this. So we're gonna try and get some shots of this, quite optimistic, and hopefully we'll get something out of it.
And just like that, it was the last day, and I was back in Hilo to try and shoot a train. I can hear a train. I've got a camera ready. I think it's gone. Just seen a little deer run across the path right in front of me. Could have been a dog, I suppose. After all that waiting, my train photography turned out to be pretty poor. Because I forgot to set the shutter speed fast enough for the train, I had mostly unsharp images. It did, however, make me learn about creating long exposures from multiple shots in Photoshop, which created this. So we're about to go to the airport and catch the plane home. It's not been the greatest photography trip just because the weather's not been on our side. It's rained pretty much every day, apart from a few spots here and there where we've rush to try and make the most of it but it's been a good adventure and it's about the process as much as it is the end result um, in terms of the equipment i just i haven't shot enough on film the yashika has been in the bag almost entirely for the whole trip um, i was focusing largely on the fuji it's new i was getting used to it and trying to uh, see how it works and getting excited about what it can do so i focused mainly on that um, I know the Yashica works, I know it's a good camera, I know what it can do. Um, but I'm very excited about the Fuji, it's very different to the Canon. I'm used to shooting on the Canon EOS R for photography and video. Um, so it's been an interesting adventure with the Fuji so far, there's still definitely a lot of things I need to get to grips with on it uh, for the photography side of things um, and being comfortable using it and knowing what you're shooting and how that's going to turn out later. Uh, the preview on the screen and, and sort of working out <laughs> how reflective that is of the final result. Um, the menus are great on the Fuji. I'm still getting used to them, but there's a lot of options there. And I like the way the Q button works on the back. Um, when it comes to video, I was really, I was trying to be optimistic because I wanted to be able to use it for video, especially as I've got the Black Pro Mist on there. Uh, and I thought it could be a nice, easy option for video, but there's just not enough settings on there. There's, if you could set your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture individually for video aside from photography then i'd feel more comfortable but at this point before i see the footage in the edit i feel like the camera's done some stuff that i'm not aware of so i i feel like i'm not confident what the shutter speed was a lot of the time and i i'm just not sure how it's going to look If all the stuff I've shot turns out great, then I'll feel more optimistic about shooting it next time. But I'm a little nervous about it, especially if you're trying to shoot vlog stuff and you're not looking at the screen, it's not got a flip out screen. So we shall see. But it's been a lovely adventure. It's always nice to get out with the camera and capture some moments and put stuff on the gram and realize that Instagram isn't a photography platform anymore. That's always a joy. <laughs> but there we are. Time to get home. Time to get back on the bike and try and not get in the ass again. It's been good though. The bikes, the bikes have been good to me this time. Let's go. Now I'm back home. I've had a chance to look at the photos and the video footage. I'm loving the Fuji for photography. Here's some shots from when we walked around Orkmar during a brilliantly weird history event. I feel it's really inspired me to take different kinds of photos I'm not used to shooting, and it also has a different look than what I'm used to. I'm still getting used to it and have a long way to go before I get comfortable with the menus and things like that, but I'm confident in it for stills. 
When it comes to video, I've still not fully made my mind up about how usable it will be, but I'm definitely more optimistic. The biggest problem with it is the stabilization. There isn't really any, so your movements have to be silky smooth, and even when using shots filmed at 60 frames a second, in the edit, they're not always usable when slowed down and with added stabilization. But I want to play you two clips to show why I want to persevere with it. Here's the intro to this video shot on the Fuji, and here it is on the iPhone. You can see how digitally oversharp the phone's background is. I much prefer the skin tones on the X100T, and side by side, I just love the vibe of the softer, more moody Fuji look. However, the iPhone is so easy to shoot with that I wouldn't hesitate to use it if I needed to. I hope that was an interesting look at what the Fuji X100T can do, both for photos and for video. It really has something special about it and I'm excited to get more out of it. I didn't shoot too many 35mm images on the Yashica, but once that roll is back from the lab and providing it didn't get ruined by airport security, I'll post a video comparing the Fuji to the 35mm film photos. Shooting this video on the Fuji, the iPhone and the GoPro made it really clear that anybody can create great content these days. You don't need a super expensive camera to do it. Use whatever you have. It's a great reminder that what you say and do is more important than production quality. So I encourage you to make something you enjoy and then go and share it. But before you do that, it'd be great if you could leave a like on this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment about what you thought about the Fuji and maybe this video. Then put your phone in silent and go and do something with your life. Till next time.